what's up, Kim Peeps? It is Mr. Boylan, back for another thrilling vid. In this vid, we are gonna explain how the rate law show how the rate depends on reactant concentrations. Breaking it down, as always, first thing we're gonna do, explain how the concentration that is zero, first, or second order with respect to a given reactant affects the rate of the reaction. Number dose. Determine the order with respect to a reactant from experimental data. And number three, determine the overall order of a reaction. All right, so at this point, we should already recognize that the rate is the speed of a chemical reaction, how fast or how slow that reaction occurs. And the rate law of a reaction is just the expression or mathematical relationship between the rate, between the speed of a reaction and the concentration of the reactants. And if you take a look at your screen, you're given a generalized reaction and a generalized rate law. Now, as you look at this general equation and generalized rate law, you are gonna see in it this rate constant K. It is temperature dependent, and we will define this more specifically later in the unit. But you need to recognize the larger that rate constant, the faster the rate of the reaction. The bigger that number, the bigger or faster your rate is going to be. The smaller that number, the smaller or slower your rate of reaction is going to be. In addition to the rate constant, we're also gonna be looking at the concentration of just the reactants and how those concentrations affect the rate. Now the exponent on each reactant is called the order with respect to that reactant. And it's really important to recognize that the values of those orders are not necessarily the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants, but must be determined experimentally. So again, a lot of lab work here, a lot of interpreting data in order to come up with those orders with respect to those given reactants. So super important to recognize that our coefficients here represented by the little a and little b are not necessarily the exponents or the orders with respect to those given reactants. Really important. Now, the larger those orders, the greater the effect on the rate of the reaction. So think about math. The larger these exponents get, the larger or faster your rate of reaction will be. Also note the smaller those orders are, the smaller or slower the rate of your reaction. And it's also important to note that the sum of those exponents on the reactants is called the order of the reaction or overall order. So let's take a look at an example. Here's a reaction between nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas to form nitrogen dioxide. And here's a rate law to describe the rate of this reaction based on the concentrations of our reactants. And so you wanna be comfortable with understanding and reading this rate law as second order with respect to the concentration of NO and first order with respect to the concentration of oxygen. And that the reaction is third order overall because two plus one is equal to Three, super important that you recognize, again, that the rate law has to be determined experimentally. Those orders have to be determined experimentally. So as we go back to this example, recognize that although in this example, the orders are identical to the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, that is not always the case. And that you have to determine those orders experimentally. Again, what the rate law tells us is how the rate or how the speed of a reaction depends on the concentration of the reactants. And therefore, changing the initial concentrations of a reactant will affect the initial rate of the reaction. So again, as you look at this generalized equation and generalized rate law with some initial concentrations, recognize that by changing those concentrations, you're gonna change the rate of the reaction. Okay, now let's talk about those exponents or orders mean. If a reaction is zero order, the rate of the reaction is always the same. So here in this generalized reaction with just one reactant forming products, you don't really care what products are because we're focused on the initial rates where there aren't even a whole lot of products to worry about. We would express the rate law of a zero order reaction as equal to the rate constant times the concentration of our reactant A 
to the zero order. Now, a reactant that is zero order is gonna have no effect on the rate of the reaction because anything raised to the zero power is one. So as you take a look at this graph of rate against concentration, no matter how we change that concentration, no matter how much we increase the concentration of that reactant, the rate remains constant. We say that it's zero order. Now, if a reaction is first order, the rate is directly proportional to the reactant concentration. As you take a look at our generalized reaction again, notice that we will express that by writing the concentration of our reactant A to the first order, or raised to the power of one. Recognize that doubling the concentration of A will double the rate of the reaction. Doubling this concentration doubles the rate. Again, keep in mind that sometimes the one is emitted for clarity. So again, as you take a look at this graph of rate against concentration of our reactant A, for a first order reaction, recognize that when I double my concentration, when I go from 0.2 molar to 0.4 molar, notice that from 0.003 molarity per second to 0.006 molarity per second. If a reaction is second order, then the rate is directly proportional to the square of the reactant concentration. So again, as you look at this generalized reaction, if it is second order with respect to the concentration of our reactant A, you'll see a little superscript of two. And here, doubling the concentration of A will quadruple the rate of the reaction. So doubling our concentration of A, quadrupling the rate. All right, so coming back to this graph one more time, recognize that if I started with a concentration of 0.4 molar, the rate of reaction would be slightly greater than 0.002 molarity per second. Let's say 0.0025. If I were to double my concentration, notice that the rate of the reaction quadruples, or we get to about 0.010 molarity per second, a quadrupling of my initial rate. Now. Again, driving this point home, orders must be determined experimentally. And this cannot be emphasized enough. It's important to recognize that when you have a reaction with multiple reactants, that changing the concentration of each reactant will affect the overall rate of the reaction. So what you wanna do is change the initial concentration of just one reactant at a time. That way you can determine the effect of each reactant's concentration on the rate individually. So you're gonna to have to conduct multiple trials and change the concentration of each reactant and measure the rate in some way. Usually we're using colorimetry. All right, so let's take a look at a sample reaction and talk about how we determine the orders with respect to the different reactants. Recognize that we've run four different trials. Again, we want to compare trials in which the concentration of one of the reactants stays the same so that we can determine how changing the concentrations of just a single reactant affects the rate of the reaction. So let's compare trials one and two, where the concentration of NO is doubled and the concentration of chlorine remains the same. It's held constant. Therefore, any change in the rate must be because of our change in concentration of the NO, not the Cl2. We held that constant. So when we double the concentration of NO, notice that the rate quadruples. We go from 1.20 times 10 to the minus six molarity per second to 4.80 times 10 to the minus six. This means that the reaction is second order with respect to NO. Now let's compare trials one and trials three. In this example, the concentration of chlorine is doubled while the concentration of NO remains the same. Therefore, any change in the rate of the reaction must be as a result of the change in concentration of the chlorine. Recognize here the rate is doubled when the concentration of chlorine is doubled. That means that the rate of reaction with respect to chlorine is first order. Now, to determine the reaction order overall, all you have to do is simply sum together the orders of the individual reactants. So we would say that this reaction is third order overall. We can confirm that by comparing trials one and four. In these two trials, both reactants are doubled and the reaction rate is increased eight times. 
But again, if you're not provided enough information to come up with that comparison, simply you can always determine the overall order of the reaction simply by summing together the individual orders of the individual reactants. All right, and that does it for this video. Have a fantastic day.